Hey there. I want you to change the way you look at boundaries. The way you've been looking at boundaries, possibly for your entire life. I want you to think of boundaries in the following three concepts. You and I having a difference of opinion does not make me unsafe. The space between what I think and what I say that's what I've been calling the containment boundary. Picture it as someone being contained, like a container goes over them. And the space between what I hear and what I absorb. That's what I call the protective boundary. If something you are thinking about, doing, enacting, a change of your behavior does not fit into one of those three categories, it's not a boundary anymore in your mind. It's not a boundary still valid, still useful, likely something you still need to do, not a boundary. How should you look at these other things? I'm gonna give an example, likely consequences. So the, the example that's coming to my mind is um, a wife who for whatever reason she has at the time, says to her husband, if this happens again, I'm taking the kids and staying at my mom's. And Mo many people out there picture that as a boundary and then they can get confused by my concept of containing versus protective containing and protective because it doesn't really fit into either of those categories but it's still a boundary and I'm going to challenge you and say no that's a consequence and again still healthy if the husband's behavior is that egregious it's likely something she needs to do so I'm not challenging it I'm saying there are consequences in the world there are consequences for our actions I can drive whatever speed I want on the highway, believe it or not. I really can. I could get a ticket. I could get in an accident. There are consequences for my actions. Those aren't boundaries. Those are consequences. Finally saying to your spouse, if this happens again, if you touch me again, if you drink again, if you cheat on me again, I mean, I don't know, it could be egregious, right? Um, then X, Y, or Z, those are consequences. My husband and I watch TV together every night. If I'm not feeling connected to him, I'm not going to act connected. If whatever the behavior is, I could say to him, if this happens, I'm not watching TV with you tonight. I know how minor that sounds. I totally get it. I'm trying to paint a picture. So again, just know the difference boundaries versus consequences because when you start to really get a different grasp of all of these concepts in your mind and this different way of looking at it and different verbiage behind it and the verbiage I'm going to start calling it Vicky language the verbiage really is living relationally but I like Vicky language um, it all starts to make sense and become easier to do because you see how all these things become interrelated you cannot set a consequence if you're not in healthy self-esteem because you won't feel worth it. You'll feel less than, and your, your brain won't really go to, I'm not worth that consequence. It'll be more, I can't set that consequence for these reasons. And it could be, I can't set this consequence because he won't listen anyway. That's my voice has no value. And that's, I'm not worthy of it. He and I are not equal. He has more importance than me. So far be it for me to set a consequence because he's not my equal self-esteem. I stand equal to all eye to eye and toe to toe. Boundaries. I stand equal and I'm allowed to have a difference of opinion. That's how boundaries and self-esteem go hand in hand. They're linked. And this is how with healthy boundaries and healthy self-esteem in place, you make healthier decisions because you can set those consequences and you can stand by them. Because keep that in mind too, a consequence is, I don't wanna say basically useless, um, it loses its teeth if you're not gonna stand by it. I mean, I had a couple in here years ago where um, she said, if this happens again, I will leave him. I mean, he was sitting right there, it was like, I'll leave you. And I asked her to step out of my office for a moment, which I have done in my couple sessions and she was more than willing. And I looked at him and I said, do you believe her? And he said, no, not at all. She's not leaving me. 
And I said, can we talk about this more openly when she comes in? And he said, yes. And she came in and I said, so here's what we talked about. Do you think he believes you when you say if this happens again, I'll leave? And she goes, he doesn't believe me at all. <laughs> There's no consequence if you're not really willing to do it. And by the way, the consequence could be painful for you, me as well. Like if I say to my husband, if this happens, I'm not watching TV with you tonight. Well, now I'm out of connection too. So it could be painful for me to say that. I don't want to do that. If for nothing else, I like watching TV on the couch with the nice big TV. So the consequence may be painful for the whoever is setting it as well. And it needs to have teeth enough to change the behavior. It's not an ultimatum. The person still has choices. They get to choose what they're going to do, knowing what their consequence is. Because the fact of the matter is, I want to say ladies, because this is a typical thing that ladies do. It is gender neutral, but it's more typically ladies. Complaining and nagging is not a consequence. You got to change your consequence. And now I'm going to come back and repeat myself. You can only set a consequence when you are in your healthy self-esteem with healthy boundaries. So again, whole new way of looking at things. If this really, um, I don't want to say blows your mind, but if this is really new information to you, please feel free to comment. Let me know. Push back. Give me other concepts if you want, or give me, tell me why you don't agree with this. Um, and as always, head over to yourdecisiondiva.com to get my free guide on um, healthy self-esteem. There's not boundaries in the guide. It's all about self-esteem and how self-esteem, healthy self-esteem affects our decision making. So head over to yourdecisiondiva.com because I am your decision diva, your queen of clarity. And I'll see you next time.